What's going on guys? How you doing today? Thanks for checking in. A good video today. We're installing a pre-hung door. Um, I did just release a video recently of me installing a door in under five minutes. And this time I'm going to slow it down, kind of go over what I'm thinking, give you my little tips and tricks to possibly have you get this done at your home. It's the easiest way. So please follow along and uh, hope you enjoy. Hammer that like button for that YouTube algorithm. Keeps me moving and uh, let's get into it. Um, quick tools. We got a level. We've got our two guns, like we always do, our inch and a quarter, and our two inch. This is 18 gauge, 16 gauge. We do have a bucket of shims here off to the side. Um, we've got our door over here. This is a two eight door or a 32 inch door, two ways of saying it. Casing off to the side. So we pretty much have everything we need right here ready to go. All right guys, just three quick tips in order for you to figure out what door you need for the condition you're working on. Um, first, we need to measure the opening. That's gonna be from stud to stud. We got 34 inches in this case. Reason being, when we're measuring stud to stud, we need to take two inches off for the size of the door. So we need a 32 inch door for a 34 rough opening. Reason being is we have jam thickness on each side, which takes up an inch and a half, and we need room for shimming. Second is the swing of the door. This condition, we're gonna swing it in to the bathroom with a right hand swing. Maybe you have a left hand condition. That's the second thing you need to consider is there's a left and a right hand. Third condition, if you have an outlet, you do not want the door to swing open and cover the outlet. When you come into the room, you'll wanna have the switch accessible from however you, you figure out your door to open. Don't cover switches. Sweet. All right, let's get back into it. We got our casing over here off to the side. You guys know, 3 16 for the legs for the reveal and 3 8 for the header. Got it in my uh, double door video. Um, so we're just gonna kinda jump into it here. We are case hanging the door. So we've got our casing. We're gonna set it over here on the door just to get it prepped. Now I've got my header. I'm gonna set it up top. I'm gonna to kind of eyeball my 3 16 reveal, but I also kind of need to look over on this side and on this side and kind of split the difference. So I center it, split the difference. We got our 3 16 up top and we got two shots just to hold the casing up there. I am rolling the casing just a little bit for this condition, it is Anderson. Just kind of rolling it a little bit, rolling it back towards us, pushing and flexing it to get into the right reveal. Two shots over here. Now I need to come down to this side and do the same thing. Kind of rolling the casing, flexing it up to my 3 16 two shots. So now that header's installed, set the gun off to the side, grab both pieces and we're going to throw a little bit of wood glue on top. We're just going to do a little bead on both. We don't want to overdo it. Don't want the glue to necessarily ooze out too much. Now we're going to set the first casing up to the side here. Now I'm going to line up the miter. Two shots. Double tap at the top. Now I'm gonna start working my way down, guys, and it's just flexing the casing back and forth as I'm working my way down. Not gonna worry about up here just yet. We'll come back to that. So I'm flexing the casing towards me. I'm rolling it towards me. And I'm also making sure I have my 3 16 reveal. And I really want two shots at, at each hinge. We got three hinges, obviously, for the door, and I want two shots, one above, and one below. It's gonna help us for, for strength. One shot above, one shot below. Below. Keep working down, and I'm still, I'm still kind of flexing this in a little bit, moving it around. One shot above, one shot below. The bottom, do my handy double tap. Maybe get one more, a little extra security. Need to work my way back up to the top, and I do need to Flex these together to get the miter to line up. We've got our glue, and I am gonna do one shot over the top. And 
look at that, kind of pinches it together. Just a little bit of glue oozing out, just a little hair sand after it's finally installed. We got one, one leg installed, let's go to the next leg. And it's just the same technique, guys. Slide it up, kind of holding it with my middle finger and my thumb and just getting the, getting the miter to line up. And I need to do two shots to hold it, double tap, and then start working my way down. 3 16 reveal, keep working down. Don't need to go too crazy. It looks like maybe every 10 to 12 inches, I'm kind of just putting a shot in. 10 to 12 inches, don't, not, don't put a shot right here where the door is latching. You'll just have to break that nail out. So I don't want any shots potentially where your door is gonna latch. Keep working yourself down till you get to the bottom. Two shots at the bottom, maybe one more coming up. And then we still need to come back up to the top, flex those two together, and get one shot through both. And it's just a hair open, but we're gonna solve that once we push the door into the hole. Switch guns. So we're gonna get our two and a half inch now, or actually it's, we're gonna use two inch nails, but it's a two and a half inch Metabo finish nailer. And I need to get out a scraper. I've got a couple boogers or a couple chunks in the opening. And I just wanna make sure it's all cleaned out. So kind of scrape that off to the side. Make sure all the, all the chunks are off. Make sure if you, maybe you just ripped out your old door and there's like a shim and a couple nails. Make sure we're hammering everything in and getting that nice and cleared up. All right guys, now it's just getting the door into the hole. And what I wanna do is I wanna put my foot underneath. The door is held by three nails. Maybe your door is held by a plastic unit that you have to unscrew. Maybe there's Phillips screws. In this case, there's three nails. So I get my little miniature claw here and I gotta pull these three nails out. But notice my foot's still underneath. I'm still, I'm still holding the door up. If my foot wasn't there, the door would just kind of fall out of position. But we're really just trying to keep those miters intact right now. And this is, this is kind of a next crucial step. Maybe blow anything that's in the way. And now I just want to kind of grab the door. I, want, I don't want to grab it too hard, but we're going to lift it and we're going to put it in now. Setting it in the hole. We're gonna to wanna to make sure it's nice and tight. The casing's tight to the drywall, but we do not wanna push hard. Right now, it's, it's on my toe, it's not too heavy. So we're gonna kinda of lift it up, get my toe out of there, and drop it down to the ground. And make sure both, both jams are on the ground. And in this case, they are. Both are touching the ground. Now that your door's in the hole, you need to get the handy level out. What we need to do is we need to set the level up to the three hinges of the door. The three hinges. And we need to look at the bubble. And the bubble is, is just slightly out. So we're gonna need to adjust it. Slightly out, so what I'm gonna do is kind of lift the door over a little bit, push it over, and I need to just pretty much get the door adjusted and check the bubble movement until it's perfect. About right there, it is dead nuts level. So step back for me. My next step, after I've got my level on, my jam's on the ground, my bubble is in the lines, I need to check my reveal of the top. In this case, this is the reveal we're trying to match since it's right above the door and it looks like we're getting a little bit bigger on this top right corner. Just a hair, not a lot, but we are getting bigger. So, what I need to do is I need to lift this side, which will lift the door up. We can't take this jam down further. It's on the ground, guys. So we need to lift this side up in order to get our reveal better. So, just take my word for it while I'm doing this, but I'm gonna put my foot underneath. I'm gonna lift the door up just a little bit, maybe just so you guys can understand what's going on. Let's throw a shim under there. 
So the door's up about 3 16ths of an inch on top of the shim. Now I need to get my level back into the center of the lines. And there it is, bubbles in the center of the lines. Okay, now let's check our reveal out. We got our open reveal over here that we're trying to match. And it's nice and tight on this side. We can't go down on this side, but guess what? We can go up to match that reveal. So, in this case, we've had to lift it. It's level. Maybe you didn't have to add a shim to lift it. Maybe it's already tight up here in the corner and you don't have to lift the door then. But in the condition we have, in order to get it level and get the reveal correct, we've lifted it. Bubbles in the center of the lines. We get our gun out. Two shots at the top hinge. Follow down. Two shots at the middle hinge. The level is still tied up against the hinges. My foot is still under the door while I'm shooting. Two more shots at the bottom hinge. Kind of the top and bottom. But we want those security and check that out guys. It's kind of the same thing that I did with the previous nailer with the inch and a quarter nails. The nails are pretty similar, pretty close to, but we need that security and strength next to the hinges, case hanging the door. Set the level off to the side for now. Now it's just going around the whole door and matching reveals. So, these three locations are secure. I'm gonna come down here. I can see my reveal's a little snug down here at the bottom. So let's just tap it open a little bit. Match this up. Two shots. Okay, let's head up. Head up to this corner. So, we've got two reveals going on here. One on the side of the door, one on the top. Let's over, head over to this side. One on the side of the door really is looking good, but the one on the top obviously is tight. We lifted the door, but guess it, get this. We can now lift this side up just a little bit. Now this side can be flexed just a little bit. So let's lift this side up, eyeball it. You don't need to be perfect. Let's eyeball that gap to that gap. Make sure that is the same. Make sure this is the same as this side. You can flex back and forth, go up and down, kind of tap to the side. So whatever you got to do to get those reveals to match up from this corner to that corner, do it. Two nails. Come across, one nail at the top. Now we need two more over here. Hold the casing. Head back over to this side. Now we need to follow the reveal all the way down the door. So we just need to flex this back and forth to match the reveal all the way down the door. Super simple, right? Flex it, eyeball it, one nail to secure it where it needs to be. Another nail secured. No nails, no nails in this. We don't want any nails in this region of the casing or anything for this door to go in. For the, for the hardware to go on the door. Keep working our way down. Two shots at the bottom. Reveal's looking really good. One more shot. Now guys, we can open the door. It's not going anywhere. It's held on by the casing, which we have shot to the jam. So we can now open the door. And let's head to the other side. All right, guys, now we're on the other side, the other side of the door, but I just gotta say we're in this bedroom. Take a quick span out there. You gotta love just that fresh Colorado snow, a little bit of mountain range in the back. Man, beautiful, gorgeous out there. All right, let's get back to it. Um, what I've done is I've already got some shims in my hand and I pre-cut these shims to three and a half, four inches. It's just easier for me to wedge them in than it is Technically, for me to constantly be dealing with a large shim, it's easier just to have these pre-cut shims that are all different sizes. Next step, guys, is we need to shim the door. Six locations, one at each hinge, and then three to follow up on the same side on the other side. So let's go through it. There's the gap that we need. Now, it's kind of like a little fill the gap game here. I don't know if you want to call it Tetris or whatever, but it's it's trying to fit shims in there and I'm getting pretty good at it to the point where you could push it in there. 
it's tight, it's not moving. So I kind of just play this little game of, okay, what shim goes in here? Oh, that one fits in there, it's still loose, so now I need a, a tiny shim in the stack, and I need to slide that in there. But I don't want this jam to flex this way while I'm doing it, and I don't want to leave it loose so it flexes this way when I nail it. So it's kind of a, it's a game. Now right there, it's tight, little sticking out. I want to leave that, because that's where it's tight. We can hammer that off. All right, guys, remember, you got to fill the hole. We're not flexing the jam. So here's my shim that I'm putting in there and I'm putting it in and it's snug. It's not moving. I could barely move it, yes, but it's snug. Once I shoot it, it's not moving. So six locations shimmed. We're headed to the next step. That is checking, checking the door to see how it's hitting. And that is hitting against the door stop. Here's your door stop. Obviously the door closes, the door jam, and it closes into the door stop. So we need to see, it's tight up this, it's, it's hitting up here. Now let's go to the bottom. And I'm barely holding the door. Now let's go to the bottom. It's open at the bottom, okay? So we need to make an adjustment. So this closes nice and tight down the entire side of the door. So especially when it gets cocked in, that's where it stays. First thing we need to check though is on this side, we have, we have leveled the door this way by putting it up against the three hinges. We just need to do a quick check on this side. All framing's a little different. A bunch of framing, you know, can be just out a little bit, which changes the conditions. But let's check this side. This side's actually in the lines, it's perfect. So in this case, we almost, we don't want to touch this side. We don't want to make any adjustments. This side's perfect. Maybe this side was out a quarter of an inch because you could see that on the bubble of your level, it was, it was out a level. So maybe you would want to adjust this side of the jam to try to get this back into plumb before you move on to this next step. In this case, we're plumb. We're not going to do any adjustments. We're going to let this side be and just focus on this side where the door is closing. Done with the level. All right, guys. So remember, hitting at the top, open at the bottom. There's many ways to make this jam just flex or tapping the door stop to make it hit. So we can suck it over. We can push the bottom over. We can do a bunch of stuff. We don't want to move this side. So in this condition, guys, I'm going to start by pulling the top towards us where it's hitting on the doorstop, open on the bottom. I'm going to start by pulling it over. And sometimes I just do very light taps on the other side and it does flex pretty easy. Two shots, maybe three shots just to hold it. We were going to save the last shot to go through the door stop and through the shims. Every shot through the shims. Okay, so we're still hitting at the top. If you come down, it's getting a lot closer at the bottom. So now we just need to flex this side over a little bit. And it's as simple as maybe putting, putting a hand on to hold it. I can probably flex it enough just by pushing it. Maybe it's just a little tap but we need to flex it towards the door because there was the gap was over here. Now let's close it. So now I've flexed it over just a 16th. We're hitting at the top. We're hitting at the shim. I put one nail in through the shim. We're hitting nice. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a couple more there to hold it. Now the bottom is still open a little bit. On that last video in five minutes, you guys saw me put my toe and I told you I put my toe down there, but we have the shim. So I put my toe down there. The shim's not going to move. It's nice and snug. And I'm just, just going to tap it over. A couple shots through the shim. I put my pencil line because you can't see the shim sticking out. And now the door's hitting a lot better. You could also, you could hear it. There's no rattle. 
This side's almost finished and secured, but this side hasn't been touched yet. But we didn't want to, this side was perfect. I need to now shoot this whole side and secure this side fully. Four shots through the shims. Four shots and now tap that away gently. Shims will break easy. Just tap it back. All right. Jam side, hinge side secured. Doors closed and really nice, but we still need to look up and down the door stop because sometimes, even in this condition, we're talking about a 16th or less. Maybe it's just worth tapping to get this perfect. After you've tapped it over and you've got it perfect, let's get two more shots or one shot through the door stop, through the shim. Work our way back up, hitting, one shot. We already had three, we just needed one. Now, we're hitting at the top, hitting here, and we're just a little open in the center. Take out the handy hammer, and it's very gentle, guys. Just need to tap it over. It doesn't even dent the material. A little more. And look at that. Now it's nice and snug, all the way up to the top, all the way down. Just don't forget to get the last shots in the top shims. And your door is fully secured. One step to go, and that's to case this back side of the door, and it's gonna be ready for paint. All right, guys, we got our casing. All we gotta do is case this bad boy. And then Brian and I are gonna tie in two pieces of baseboard and this room will be finished. So, throw the casing up top, remember, center it between reveals, 3 16 3 16 3 16 And when you're holding it there, let's get two shots in the center. Now start working your way down the line. Maybe one more, and then let's get two at the corner. Work your way down the other way. Lift it a little. All right, get the gun back on the tool belt. Get both casing pieces, get out the glue again. Get the glue on the miters. We're gonna lean one off to the side. We'll come back to that guy. Set this one down. Maybe you need to scrape a little drywall, tap in a little drywall to get it flush. Just make sure you're doing it behind the width of your casing if you have to tap anything to get it nice and clean. Just make sure you do it behind so you don't damage and you don't have to, you don't have to do any drywall finish work. Get that miter up there, right in the corner. Two shots, right where that miter lines up. I'm gonna wipe that glue away just to verify it was a good shot. And just start working your way down, guys. Three sixteenths. All right, switch guns, get back to the 16 gauge. Need a little bit more ammunition. All right, so now I'm gonna wanna hold the casing. There's just a little fuzz up top. So I'm gonna wanna hold the casing while I shoot it. Hold it ha, within, you know, more than two inches away, because that's how, my, how long the nail is. Work your way around, pull it back. Hold it a little bit, get that miter looking better. Hold it while you shoot. And work your way back around. Come back, switch over. And your door is fully installed. Just gonna do a little sanding of the miters. We glued them. Now we're just gonna do a light sand and this door is gonna be ready for paint. So let's hit it real quick, sand it. And there you go guys, fully installed door. 
shuts beautifully. It's hitting the doorstop all the way. Went over that with you guys. Hope you learned something. Hopefully this can kind of get you thinking about starting a project in your house. Or maybe you've got a door that's getting ready to fall out of the hole and you're intimidated, you don't know what to do. Watch this video, it'll at least help. Come on now, watch the video, like, subscribe. Hammer that like actually. But thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Peace.